Hello, I'm Luis Serrano, and this video is about clustering. We're going to learn two very important algorithms, k-means clustering and hierarchical clustering. Clustering is a type of unsupervised learning, and it basically consists in grouping data. So if your data looks like it's all over the place, the algorithm will say, okay, you got a group here, you got a group here, a group here, etc. So let's take a look. So let's start with an application. The application is going to be in marketing, in particular in customer segmentation. And the situation is the following. We have an app and we want to market this app. We've looked at our budget and we can actually make three marketing strategies. So that's our goal, to make three marketing strategies. So the idea is to look at their potential customer base and to split it into three well-defined groups. When we look at the customer base, we realize that we have two types of information. We have their age in years and uh, we have their engagement with a certain page in number of days per week. So one of the columns is demographic, age, and the other one is behavioral, which is engagement with the page. And the engagement of the page can be a number from zero to seven since it's in days per week. So we look at the potential customer base and this is it. There's eight people with their age and their engagement. So by looking at this list of people, what groups can you come up with? Let's take a look. Feel free to pause the video and think about it for a minute. So just by eyeballing, I can think that, for example, these two people are similar. They have similar ages and similar engagements. Maybe I could put those in the same group. Uh, I don't know. Maybe these two are similar as well. We can take a while and we can actually write them down and maybe come up with groups. But there's got to be something easier. Or at least something mechanical that the computer can do automatically. So one of the first things to do with data is to plot it. So let's let's plot it in some way. Let's plot it like this. So in the horizontal axis, we put the age and in the vertical axis, we put the engagement. And now it looks more clear, right? There are three groups. Here is one, here is another one, and here is the other one. So that's our three marketing strategies. The first one is for people around the age of 20 who are have a low engagement with the page two three and four days a week then strategy two for people that are around their late 30s and early 40s and high engagement with the page and then the last one is for people that are around their 50s and very low engagement with the page and that is pretty much what clustering is basically if our data looks like it's a bunch of points like this then a clustering algorithm will say hey you know what i don't know much about your data but i can tell you that it's kind of split into these groups. So what we learned in this video is how to do these clustering. How does the computer identify these groups? Because for a human, in this small case, it's easy, but for a computer, it's not. And in particular, if you have many, many, many points and, and many columns or many dimensions, it's not easy. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two important methods. The first one is called k-means clustering, and the second one is called hierarchical clustering. So let's start with k-means clustering. And the question is, how does the computer look at this points all over the place and figure out that they are forming these groups? So when I try to imagine points in the plane, I just imagine places in a city and trying to put pizza parlors. So let's say that we are the owners of this pizza place and we wanna put three pizza parlors in this city. And what we wanna do is we wanna put them in such a way that we serve our clientele in the best possible way. So we look at our clientele and it looks like this. This is where they live. So what we wanna do is locate three pizza parlors in the best possible places that will serve our clientele. So if you take a look at it, uh, you can come up with three places, right? It seems like we should have a red one that serves the red points, a blue one that serves the blue points, and a yellow one that serves the yellow points. However, for a human, this is easy, but a computer, has a harder time. So what the computer is gonna do is, like in most things in machine learning, start at a random spot and start getting better and better. So how does it start? Well, first it locates three random points and puts three pizza parlors there. And now what we're gonna do is a series of slightly obvious logical statements that when put together will get us to a better place. So the first logical statement is, it seems like if we have the pizza parlors in these places, everyone should go to the closest one to them. That makes sense, right? So we're gonna plot all the people that go to the red, 
to the blue and to the yellow pizza parlor. Basically, you go to the one that is the closest. So here's another logical statement. If all the red people go to the red pizza parlor, it would make sense to put it in the center of all those houses, right? And the same thing with the blue and with the yellow. Basically, you move the pizza parlor to the center of the houses that it's serving. So the yellow one will serve these houses over here. The blue one is serving these houses over here and the red one is serving these houses over here. So we move each one of them to the center of the houses that they're serving. And now let's apply the first logical statement again. We have three pizza parlors and everyone's gonna go to the one that is closest to them. So something's changed, right? Because let's take a look at these three blue points. Well, now they're closer to the yellow pizza parlor. So these people move and now they're gonna go to the other, to the yellow pizza parlor. What about these two red points over here? Well, now they're closer to the blue pizza parlor, so they're gonna start going to the blue pizza parlor now. So let's go back to the other logical statement, which is that the best location for a pizza parlor is the center of the houses that it serves. So we move every pizza parlor to the center of the houses that it serves. And again, let's go back to the first logical statement, which is every person goes to the closest pizza parlor. So if you look at these points over here, they are red, but now they're much closer to the blue pizza parlor, so they move to the blue pizza parlor now. And you can see that we're getting better and better, right? Because now when we apply the other statement, which is every pizza parlor should be at the center of the houses that it serves, then now we move everything to the center where the houses where it serves and we're done. So that's pretty simple, right? And a computer can do it because a computer can find the center of a bunch of points by just averaging the coordinates and can also determine if a point is closer to one center than to the other one because it simply just applies the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula and, and compares numbers. These are, these are decisions that a computer can make very easily. So we managed to think like a computer and not like a human, which is basically the main idea in machine learning. So this is the k-means clustering algorithm. Now you may be noticing that we took one decision that seemed to be taken by a human and not by a computer, right? We decided that there were three clusters. But as we said, that's hard for a computer to decide. A human can see it, but a computer can't. So here's a question. How do we know how many clusters to pick? And for this, we have a few methods, but I'm gonna show you what's called the elbow method. So the elbow method basically says, try a bunch of numbers and then be a little smart on how to pick the best one. So let's try with one cluster. We can do this algorithm with only one cluster and we're probably gonna get something like this. Every house go to the same pizza parlor. Then we can run it with two clusters and you can start seeing that this algorithm actually depends on where the original point starts. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes give you different answers. So let's say we try two clusters and we got this. Then we try three clusters and we got the solution that we got. Then we try with four clusters and let's say we got this, with five clusters and we got this, and with six clusters and we got this. So by eyeballing this, we can see that the best solution is with three clusters, but again, we need to teach the computer how to find the three clusters. We need to think like a computer, so we can't rationalize things. We have to do things like measuring distances, comparing numbers, averaging coordinates, etc. So with those tools, how do we find that three is the best? Well, what we need is a measure of how good is one clustering. And uh, maybe the following measure will make sense. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of the diameter of a clustering. And the diameter is simply gonna be the largest possible distance between two points of the same color. That basically tells us how big each group is in a, in a, in a rough way. So let's look at the first uh, one cluster solution. The longest possible distance between two points of the same color is this one. Those two red points are the farthest apart. So that distance is, is in a way telling us how good is that clustering. Let's do it with two clusters. So the longest distance, let's say it's this distance over here. That tells us how good the clustering is with two clusters. Now let's do it with three clusters. And uh, let's say that the longest distance is this one over here. Again, with four clusters, the longest distance is this one. With five clusters, the longest distance is this one and with six clusters is this one. 
Now I just eyeball these distances, so if you think there's another one, you may be correct. But conceptually, what we're trying to do is to, to define the next method, which is the elbow method. So what we're gonna do is we take all these distances and we graph them in the following way. On the horizontal axis, we're gonna put the number of clusters. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And on the vertical axis, we're gonna graph the diameter. So we get the following points. And now what we do is we join these points. And now this is somewhere where a human can intervene. A human can look at this graph and say, okay, you know what? I want the elbow to be here. There are also some automatic methods to do this but at some point in in the machine learning algorithm is is good to actually have a consistency check because you may have an idea of how many clusters you want or you may have an idea of how many clusters you, you would like to have or a maximum or a minimum so anyway in some way or another we figure out that the number is three um, another thing that's important is that this elbow math is very easy for a human uh, if our if our data has many many columns we're looking at points in very high dimensions however the elbow method the graph is always going to be two-dimensional so that's it that's how we decided that three clusters are the best and that is the k-means clustering algorithm in a nutshell okay so now let's go to our second method which is hierarchical clustering and we're going to do a similar problem except now with this data set we're going to find the a clustering into let's see how many groups we can find so another way to do it is the following let's think about this let's think of the two closest points it would make sense to say that these two points that are the closest will belong to the same group maybe yes maybe no but it's a sensical thing to ask right so let's go on that statement let's say these are the two closest points so these two are going to be part of the same group now, what are the next two closest points? Let's say it's this two. So these two belong in a group. And we're gonna keep going in this direction. The two closest points are these ones. So these two belong to the same group. The two closest points are these ones. So now what do we do? Well, we just join the two groups. So now it becomes a group of three. The two closest points are these two. So they join like this. The two closest points after that are these two. So we join the two groups, the group of two and the group of three into a group of five. And then the next pair of points that are the closest are these two. So we're gonna join them, but let's say that's just too big. So we have maybe a, a measure of how much is too far. So we stop here. And that's it, that's hierarchical clustering. It's pretty simple, right? Now again, there seemed to be a human decision here, right? Why did we decide on that being the distance? Or for example, why did we decide on two being the number of clusters? So we can make this decision. But let's actually look at an educated way to make this decision. So let's answer this question. How do we decide the distance or the number of clusters? So a way to do it is by building something called a dendrogram. So what we're gonna do is the following. We're gonna put our points in a row over here, one up to eight. And then in the vertical axis, we're gonna graph the distance. And I'm gonna show you how. Let's pick the closest two points, which are four and five. So we join four and five and we join them over here. And uh, this is not up to scale, but the height of that little curved line between four and five, let's say it's the distance between four and five. So we join this two, and then we go to the next two, which is one, two. And so we're gonna join one, two here, and we're gonna join them in the dendrograph in the right. And again, assume that that height of that little uh, curved line is the distance between one and two. Now we join the next pair, which is six and seven. So we join six and seven, and again, the height is the distance. We keep going, six and eight. So now we're gonna join six and eight. How do we join them? Well, we join them like this, the group of six, seven, and the group of eight. And the next group is three and four, five. So they get joined like this. And now the next group is gonna be two and three. So we join the group corresponding to two and the group corresponding to three in the dendrogram. And notice that the dendrogram goes up because these distances increase. So every time we make a new join, it's higher than the previous ones. The next ones that we join are three and six. So we end up joining these two trees like that. And so that's it. We have a lot of information about this set in this dendrogram. And now how do we decide where to cut? Well, let's say we cut over here at a certain distance. 
and that gives us two clusters, which are this one, one, two, three, four, and five, and this one, which is six, seven, and eight. So notice that we made the decision on cutting based on how much a distance is too far away or how many clusters do we want to obtain. Let's say that we want to obtain four clusters. So we cut at this distance over here, which gives us four clusters, the cluster formed by one and two, the one formed by three by itself, the one formed by four and five, and the one formed by six, seven, and eight. So again, these decisions are taken by a human, but think about it again. Let's say we have billions of points, and let's say that they live in a thousand dimensional space. It doesn't matter, the dendrogram is still a two dimensional figure, and we can easily make decisions on it. So again, a combination of a computer algorithm and some smart human decisions, it would give us the best clustering. And that's it, that's hierarchical clustering in a nutshell. Clustering has some very interesting applications and let me mention some of them. Things like genetics or evolutionary biology, the genome carries a lot of information about a species and if you manage to cluster them, you get to understand a lot about species and how they evolved into what they are right now. Other things I recommend are systems use a lot of clustering. For example, the way you may have got this video recommended was using several methods that include clustering users, grouping them into, into similar users, so maybe somebody very similar than you uh, watched this video and that's why you gotta recommend it. And that brings us to social networks, which is another place where clustering is used a lot. In a very similar example than the one we did, uh, social networks use these methods to group users into certain similar groups based on demographics, based on behavior, and then be able to target information to them that they want to see or suggest you friends that are similar to you etc so that's all for now thank you very much for your attention as usual if you would like to see some more of this content please subscribe or hit like uh, feel free to share it with your friends and feel free to throw in a comment and tell me what you think of the video or if you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see and my twitter handle is Louis Likes Math. if you'd like to tweet at me so thanks again and see you in the next video.